Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Seth Keep keeping it real. Hope you guys are having a really good day so far. I see we already have almost 70 people here um, ready to start. So really, really glad to see you guys. Um, this is a really special day to me because this is the first time that we've done a co-interview with Amazow specifically on how to find a huge potential product. Um, I love the guys at Amazow. I'm totally transparent about that. They're amazing. And I'll share the story with you guys as far as how I learned about Amazow. Um, I knew about a lot of other competitors long before Amazow. Jungle Scout, uh, Unicorn Smasher, Camel Camel, like other ones that help you find products. And there's some very good tools out there. But the reason Amazow has always been, and I'm very transparent about this, my favorite research tool on Amazon, um, and I discovered this through the application, is because the parameters they use for finding products were so close to mine. I was, I was like, man, these guys are in my brain. What's going on? And this is after I've been selling on Amazon for a while and was making very good money doing it. And so one of my clients, someone I coached who actually lives in Canada, he was selling in the US. And he goes, Seth, have you heard about these guys? And I said, no. And so he introduced me to the application. I started checking it out. I reached out to Bob and said, we need to talk. Like, this, I love you guys' application. Um, now, we have never before had any kind of business partnership other than they asked me to do training videos for them, which I did. And in return, obviously, it helps people to know about my coaching services. But today, we have a super special announcement to share at the end of this show. I'm not going to share it yet, but um, it's about Amazon, it's about you, and it's about a super cool opportunity. Um, so this is, some of you guys probably sensed this was going to happen at some time in the future. And if you did, then that's awesome. Um, but today we're going to focus on one thing very intensely, and that is how to find a huge potential product on Amazon. Because as you guys know, sometimes this is the scariest part of selling. You're about to spend money and you're going to send it to a supplier in another country and you're hoping that this product, when it gets to your house, first of all, you hope it shows up. Second, you hope it's a quality product. But third, you want to know that it's actually going to sell. You want to know that that money is going to make you more money. You don't want to drop two, three, four grand and then not see any sales. And that's one of the most depressing feelings in the world is putting a product in the Amazon store and it not moving. And I've been there. It's happened to me more than once. And so through those experiences, we've begun to learn how to you find products that actually work. And it's not 100% science, but it is largely science. There are certain parameters you can look at and be very confident it's going to sell. And so we want to de-risk de you guys as much as possible. I'm going to check the chat here real quick. Um, Alan, good to see you. Hello, Michael. Hello, Eli. Hello, Mofili. Amit, good to see you. LaShawn, another Michael. How are you? Mix Irish International, how's it going? Hello, Jean. Hello, Easy Creations. Fan Man, Roberto, Stanley, and Lisa. Sindri. Entrepreneur Rob, <laughs> I love it. Hey Dale, how's it going? Hello Tina's Closet, Rex, Don, Longevity. Uh, Jesse, how are you? <laughs> Who needs coffee? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, that actually uh, reminds me and I wanna specifically thank you guys and I don't remember who it was, but one of you guys sent me this in the mail and I just wanted to, in, don't worry about the debt, that was, I don't know, I think we dropped it or something. <laughs> it sounds bad. I'm like, look at this. <laughs> look, at the, <laughs> look at the dented product you sent me. But seriously, this tea. Send it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we dropped it. I really don't remember how we got this debt. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to come off that way. But um, this tea is amazing. And I'm drinking it right now. And Bob, I don't know. I can't remember if I told you this or not. But six months ago, I gave up coffee because it was becoming a major addiction and because I felt like it was my go-to anytime you know I needed more energy or I was having a hard day or mm -hmm. it just became sort of my you know you know we tend to self-medicate but it became a problem my stomach felt acidic I started getting achiness in my muscles and my bones and so I gave it up six months ago and a few days ago I drank a cup not even a cup it was like a third of a cup of coffee I went on a date with my wife we had I had a third of a cup and Bob, it wasn't that good. <laughs> I'm back drinking this tea. So whoever in this YouTube channel sent me this, I want to thank you for helping me in my endeavor. So is that coffee you're drinking as, as we speak? Actually, it's tea. 
It's, it's actually <laughs> teed for exactly the same reason. That's awesome. Really? Yeah. So I totally know what you're well, talking you, about. Yeah. You're a cyclist. Is that what you call it in Germany? Cyclist? Yeah. Fahrrad. Fahrrad. And, <laughs> <laughs> I should know that because my last name is German. It's Kniep. It means knife maker or maker of knives. Um, my grandfather came over here from Germany when he was seven years old. So my, like 99.9% .9 of my ancestors are all German. Yeah, and they've been speaking. asking about you. Oh, they have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now. <laughs> Most people think I'm Irish because of the red hair, but I'm actually not. Yeah. There's no Irish in me. Um, and, I, and I suck at the accent. I try to do it, and my kids tell me, Seth, that sounds like a Spanish accent. You're messing it up. <laughs> I've got but, it down now after 12 years. <laughs> Very good. After 12 years, the little girl had some potatoes on the field. See, I can't do it. <laughs> ah, you're not bad. You're not bad. You can see your heritage coming out. Right. So how, how are you doing today? What time is it over there? You're in Berlin? Yeah, I'm in Berlin, the, the hub of everything happening in, in Germany. And it's a little after 3 p.m. Um, and it's a beautiful day here, which is actually has not been too too common. And everybody comes out of the woodwork. And actually, we, we um, my office is on the the fashion street of Berlin, so I just have to look out my window, and I get it's like a it's like it's like a catwalk. <laughs> but Berlin Berlin fashion is a little different than than elsewhere. It's 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 very it's very edgy. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. That's hilarious. So, how do you like how do you like the culture there? Like, is it because I know you used to live in Canada? Like, is it very different? I, I heard uh, people, it's no very offense. Different, to yeah. here. Okay, no offense to Germans, and I can say this because I'm German by blood. I hear in Germany people are a little more stiff, not as laid back, and you know, a little more uptight. Is, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, Berlin is the most relaxed place in Germany, probably, and there's a huge. Huge, there are huge uh, uh, populations of expats and people from other parts of Germany. So um, uh, these are probably the most the most chilled out Germans. And and actually, on one level, they're exceptionally tolerant. Like nobody cares what you're doing. It's a little bit like San Francisco in that way. You just kind of nobody yeah. really cares what you're up to. Exactly. Um, uh, but there are little there are little you know little. Uh, little things that, that, that I still have a hard time getting used to. Um, I can give you an example. I was going to get my tires changed uh, uh, from uh, from winter to summer. See things happen a little slower here. Um, and I was trying to phone and they, they asked me all this information, like what year is your car and what model is your car and all this stuff. And we got to the end of it and I said, do you have an appointment for me today? No. Well, why did you want all this super detailed information? You know, so it's it's just a, it's funny little things. And 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 so my girlfriend is Italian. She's at the other end of the spectrum. Everything is chaos, right? Um, and uh, so we talk about sometimes about about the challenges. It, it's it's positives and negatives. You know, um, it's it's nice that things run on time, but you kind of wish that they would stay one minute after the time that it says they're going to close. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> you literally they turn the lights off when and they, they leave. <laughs> you can stay here, but we won't we won't be around to to to, wow. to, to, to charge you for your product. Well, yeah. when I when I visit Germany you'll have to take me around and show me some of those places so I can experience that culture. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. They'd be saying, Hey, are you kneeping it real? <laughs> <laughs> if you interpret the word, it means are you making knives it real? Like, I don't know if that'd be offensive or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be fun, I'm sure. You're invited anytime. We have someone from Denmark who said hello. And yeah, guys, we'll get started. So um, absolutely, we'll get right in. Thank you for your patience. Why We have this side talk over here. Um, I just wanted you guys to get to know Bob a little better as we talk. Dublin, Ireland, very cool. Hey, Carl, how you doing? Um, wake me up once y'all actually start. Okay, do you do a lot? I'll play, I'll play a... <laughs> A horn for you. <laughs> Have a, a good nap until then. Um, all right, guys. Now we will we will start right now. Okay, cool. So, Bob, we'll start with you, man. Walk us through the process you use when you are looking for products that are hot, huge potential, and just take us through that. And if you want to share your screen, that's awesome. And we're just gonna go step by step. Sure. Okay. So, um, I'll I'll I'll. 
preface this or introduce this by saying probably my my approach is different than some uh, ways that, that that have been described as, as techniques for finding potential products. What I found personally is that it's really important to me that I can somehow uh, connect with the the product that 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 I'm thinking about selling. So I'm a cyclist, as you mentioned, and so I see things all the time in, 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 in cycling, either, oh, I don't like that, or that's cool, or I could do something different. And so a lot of it comes from um, needs that I see, and that's where I start my, my process, but it's not necessarily where I end up. So I, I can give you an example. Um, I'll, I'll, just, uh, I'll just switch over here and share, share my screen. Um, well, your screen, just a quick question on that. Yeah. Um, so one thing that, and this is where Bob and I are going to differ, guys, and it's good. There's overlap, but there's differences. So I'm sure you can take from both. My concern about selling a product that I really like or connect to is it might cause me to be too emotionally connected. And maybe you are better in control of your emotional attachment to a product than I am. But I'm afraid, and I've seen people do this, where they'll buy the product just because they like it, you know, or because it was cute. Mm -hmm. But then they weren't, they weren't being analytical saying, is there actually potential? And so they ended up getting a product that was a dud and didn't make them any money. Yep. How do you, yep. what are your thoughts on that? Well, so uh, of course, I'm sure you'll agree with me because you, you do coaching. I actually think that everybody who does this should have a mentor or somebody who, who keeps it real um, and brings you back to, brings you back to reality because um I, I completely agree with you uh, that you can get caught up in it and then you can find that maybe the, you know, the, the, you, you will ignore the signals. And that's why a tool like Amazal is great because it's a, it's kind of a, a reality detector. You go through there and you say, okay, there aren't any uh, opportunities. And here's, here's an example uh, that, that I just started looking at because it was something that I, that I looked at earlier, um, which, is, which is bike pump. So I went through um, searching bike pump and didn't find anything. And there really aren't that many opportunities uh, in bike pump. The, the the market's kind of kind of saturated. Um, so I won't bore you with going through pages upon pages, but I'll show you what what happens. There's a sort of a serendipity that happens that you end up finding things that are that are semi related to what you were originally looking for and 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 you can follow a path that kind of keeps your interests and keeps you grounded in reality and so um i'll give you an example so i i put in bike pump i won't i i went through about six pages there was nothing uh, nothing of high potential it doesn't surprise me it's oversaturated then i thought okay i'll put in racing bike pump I don't even know if there's really such a thing, um, but somebody is, you know, going to look at those keywords. And then, what you notice, and you probably notice if you use Amazel, sometimes you get some strange results in your in your competitor list. That's that's not yeah. a bug of, of Amazel. It's actually, it's the way Amazon works, and um, it's it's interesting because it means that those, you know, end consumers are seeing those those products when when they're searching for those keywords. And this is an example, racing bike pump, I go down here, okay, this is not a bike pump at all, so that's interesting, but it could have come up as high potential. There's somebody's bike in there, definitely don't want that. But if I go down here, I notice that there is a product called uh, Rock, Rock Shocks Pump. So this is a pump for pumping up your, you know, if you have a mountain bike, you can pump up your your shocks. You need to pump up your shocks. <laughs> yeah, Bob, real, real quick, I'm just going to jump in real quick. Did yeah. you guys see what he did? He started with bike pump. He didn't start with pump. That's super generic, way too broad. He started a niche of that, a bike pump, that kind of pump. It's narrowed down to, it has to, if it's a pump, it's got to be a bike. But because he didn't find anything there, he narrowed it even further down to racing bike pump. See how he kept niching down until he found something? That right there is a huge strategy when you're trying to find a product. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, too, that it helps that I'm from this domain because, okay, I'm not a big mountain biker, but I know what this thing is, and I know what it's used for. So I never would have thought of this, even though I know about it. I never would have thought, okay, you know, let me see what the, the shock pumps, how they're doing. Um, but it comes up. And so it brought me in this – It's it, 
this is why I say this is like a compromise where you say, okay, this is my area. It wasn't exactly what I was originally thinking about, but at least there's 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 some signals that are showing off, you know, market potential for it. And I'm not going into an oversaturated, um, oversaturated uh, marketplace that, you know, no matter how good your product is, if you're in an oversaturated marketplace, it's it's going to be a very hard going. So now that you found that product, how do you know it's in demand other than the fact that that one single listing is selling well, but how do you know there's a market for it? Because now we have, okay, we have proof that at least this one listing has a low BSR. In other words, it's selling really well. But how do we go beyond that, Bob? Like, okay, now well, we got this. Let's but, see. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> so I don't know where this is going to lead because, um, and, and that's the other thing is, is, is to remember that I think of it as a little bit like like fishing. Um, you're not you don't get the fish every time, and you shouldn't get discouraged if you you know you hit a dead end, um, because it's just things are constantly changing. It blows me away. You know, also from the technology side, we have to be so agile because Amazon is constantly changing and everything is changing in there. So what you know, if you come back and do this, the the same thing tomorrow. Um, you could very well find something completely different, and uh, that's because you're touching, you know, you're touching the. There's this expression of an elephant from different views or different. You're touching a different part of the elephant. It's still the same thing, but you're getting a different view, um, depending on what day you go in and what you search for. So I'm going to put shock pump in here. Um, the actually, there's. I'm surprised how many how many uh, results wow. there are. That's actually Absolutely. quite high for what you think of as really, yeah. you know, obscure product. So if you hey, guys Bob, have used them. Yeah. Really, I just want to jump in while it's calculating. There's a question here. Yeah. He drew says, he says, Bob, how do you know it's not oversaturated? Um, this is a very good question. And this is something that you, you only really determine after you've done deeper research. So the way the way that Amazel is built is that it's it's a bit like a funnel. Like you take kind of you know the the ones that are looking promising and you collect them and the, you collect them in potential products and then you decide to graduate them to uh, a product that you want to track. And this is there are two subsections to that. One is get more external data so that I know the whole picture, and then um, start tracking your competitors. And I would say. The only, the, the really, the certain, the moment that you can be, you're never certain, but the moment that you can be quite certain that you're in an, an area that has some room for you is, is, is after you've done a little bit of, after you've let a little time pass and you've seen what's happening in the marketplace. Because um, it's not enough to see a snapshot. It's like you see a snapshot of, of um, you know, somebody somebody walking down the street you don't know whether they just started walking they just stopped walking or if they're about to run or whatever and that's where it gets really interesting is where you start seeing that the, the market dynamics um i can give you another ex an example of this so um i won't tell you the product because of course you never disclose your product but i was looking at a product that um was sort of for winter use again for cycling and um it was getting close to christmas and um, we have a, something that we're going to launch pretty soon that's going to al alert you to how many new sellers came into your marketplace, strong sellers came in. And while I was testing this, uh, I started seeing 30, 40 new uh, competitors coming into this every week because the sellers are really focusing on this is a good Christmas gift. And, and I guess everybody is focused on Christmas, but it's especially right. a small gift that you can give away. So that's what I mean by looking at it in, in as a, as a, as a sort of a, uh, you know, as a story rather than just snapshot. Oh, this looks good. And that, that is one of the things that Amazon has helped me with the most, pro probably actually the very most. I can still find a potential product, without a maze out. I can do it without any tool. It's just gonna take me a lot longer. And because I value time, I want something that does it quickly for me. But here's, this is so key. When you watch a product, everyone, you don't wanna just see it, oh, it's selling well today. The BSR is great, All that's the product. That's very rookie thinking. And you do that, you'll get yourself into trouble and you'll, you'll lose money. Because that product might be have a great BSR today, but tomorrow it goes up. 
as in it gets bad. And that BSR number is higher, which means it's selling less. And then it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down. It's like this. So the question is, is it going like this up? Or I'm doing the wave now. <laughs> um, or is it going like this down? You see what I mean, you guys? So it's really important, as Bob is saying, you see the product over time. And it's interesting, Bob, you mentioned Christmas. If it's selling really well right before Christmas, what does that mean for February? What does that mean even for January or March? Especially yeah. if it's a uniquely Christmas kind of product, there's no way I want to sell that unless I'm just focusing on you know seasonal products and I want to do a quick run and make cash quickly. So watching a product's trend tells you the market over time. Is it going up or is it going down? So I would never, ever go with a product after a week of research and say, oh, it's going great. I need to see it for several weeks. Okay. I'm seeing this market keeps getting better, keeps getting, okay, now I know there's something here it's worth throwing my money into. And one more thought on this real quick, Bob, before you continue. Um, if you're new to Amazon, you guys, it takes time to talk to the supplier. There are people in this team right here I know, they can tell you. Like it takes time, back and forth, back and forth. By the time you decide on a supplier, then have them build the product, especially if you're gonna differentiate it, then get it shipped to your house or directly to Amazon, you've already used up at least a month. So in a month, the market still has changed. If my hope was based on one single product and I don't understand the market, I'm crazy. But if I've watched it for a while and it's been growing, chances are in a month, it's not just going to disappear all of a sudden. It's, I have a lot more confidence. Okay, this is something I can invest in. Guys, let me know if that makes sense because this is one of the biggest mistakes new sellers make is they look at a single product and say, potential and then they go invest in it, but they haven't actually looked at the market and seen where the market is doing over a period of time. Back to you, Bob. Okay, so back to back to our um, back to our our, our adventures in Airdrop Land. Um, I kind of I didn't find exactly what I was looking for through Alibaba. I would have to do this. I, I would have to spend more time doing this, and that's also you know encourage you to not just trust what we come up as default values. Um, always think, okay, does this make sense to me? Um, and if it doesn't, um, sometimes it's just you know it, it's just because, for example, searching in Alibaba is not going to necessarily give you exactly what you want. Um, or it could be uh, occasionally we get bugs, so um, it could be a bug in the system. So also trust your intuition. Um, I just put in an, an, an estimate for for a buy price, and you know what we we're doing here is just doing a reality check. Does this is this going to make is this going to make sense? And if you get to the end of this and you've done you know a pretty thorough job, and your margins look slim, then this is again where it's reality check, where you kind of have to say, okay, um, this doesn't make sense. Actually, I, 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 I need to step back from this and say, right. you know, it's not, it's, it's not actually going to make me any money, which is, which is what we want to do, right? right. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm going to real quick jump to Jikar. He says, I use Google Trends. It's impressive. Google Trends definitely helps Jikar. I don't give it a ton of weight. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, Bob. Two, mm. two challenges with Google Trends. One challenge is if you've really niched down your product, such as, mm -hmm. um, what was your final keyword? It was shock. What was it? Shock pump. Shock pump. It may not even show up there because it's so specific. Google Trends only does very generic, broad categories. Yeah. Um, and second, remember, it's still Google Trends. It's Google. Okay, Google helps. That's some value but it is not nearly as powerful as what's happening on Amazon where people are actually spending their money, which I'm gonna share later. Um, the number, in my opinion, what is the number one most important key for finding a huge potential product? Um, and yeah, Jesse, you're right. Working with supplier takes weeks, if not months, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so regarding the Google Trends and, and, and looking at this external data, there's, you know, there's a reason why we don't go to, extrapolate too much data from here because it is it is in order for you to get it's you're, you're creating a picture and no one you know piece of that picture should should kind of uh dominate too much um most products have seasonality you can see in this that that's what i look for is seasonality and and whether this product is trending upwards whether it's it's stable or whether it's 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 going down um this sort of 
this sort of fits, you know, what you would intuitively think about a, 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 a something related to bikes, um, and it's 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 upwardly trending. So I I don't I don't go too much further there, in 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 using this and sort of saying, okay, well that means that I'm you know I'm away to the races. Uh, this this just says that this is a product that's maturing. Um, it's it's showing an upward you know positive trend that it 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 you know it's like okay. I don't see a red flag there. Whereas if I see a downward trend um, or if I see really strong seasonality, like one of the examples I pulled up just as out of curiosity was Durndal, um, which obviously is not a year round kind of fun thing to wear. Um, and uh, as you'd expect, you're gonna be sitting on Durndal for probably six <laughs> months of the year stored in Amazon's warehouse. So <laughs> you better think about that before, <laughs> before you do Durndal. And it's cool because when you click on Google Trends, you can go in and put your mouse over each little spike and it'll show you the month. So if you see all the spikes, December, 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 December. Okay, we obviously yeah. have a Christmas Hanukkah type product. We don't yeah. have, yeah, but if it's, or here's one. So someone's found flying kites. That seems like a great <laughs> product. Light, easy to ship, but then wait a minute, all the sales are March and April. Well, that's yeah. when the winds come out. Like that's, you know, for most people that's spring. That's still seasonal. Maybe not as much as Christmas product, but it's still quite seasonal. So here's a yeah. question I'm going to grab. Um, Rockwell says, will Amazon ship the slow products to the eBay customers or will they ship them back to you? So Rockwell, you can use what's called multi-channel fulfillment from Amazon where you actually, if it's in Amazon's warehouse, you can have Amazon ship it to your eBay customers. But just keep in mind, you're paying Amazon fees and eBay fees. So in some cases, if, you're just, if it's a dud and you need to get rid of it, I would just order it back and then sell them on eBay and ship them out, or I would just drop the, the price to a selling price. And then Yossi says, why can't you look backwards if it went up from a month ago until now? You can, Yossi, on Google Trends. It starts with 2004. But on AmazeOw, I don't think, can you do that on AmazeOw? Does it show what's the, you? What's the question? He, I, I, if I understand it correctly, Yossi's saying, can you take a product trend, like a group of products that you're tracking, and see how it did previous today's date. Um, in terms of the the amount of demand there was, or in terms of the kind of the competitors that you're tracking. I think, I think he means the demand, because you because when you click right. on the title, you, you know where that part where it shows you all the changes. Like they changed their product copy, they changed their photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, really Even quick, this is something so many people don't know about Amaze Out, guys. In Amaze Out, when you are tracking a product and you find all the main competitors based on BSR. You can click on the title of each one and it will show you what changes they made as well as showing you the BSR at the time of that change. So for example, if all of a sudden they change their copy, the product description, they change the wording and you saw the BSR go down, which is good because it's better to be number one than number 100, for example. That means, oh my goodness, maybe when they change those keywords on their product description, that helped them to rank better. You can study your competitors and see what they're doing so you can copy the best stuff and then absolutely crush them by doing better what they're failing in. And that's where you read the negative customer reviews. It's kind of neat because, Bob, when I met you guys, you guys were focusing a lot on what the competitors are doing well, which is awesome. You know how I started making money on Amazon? Before? I never even did a single ad, Bob, never. The main key for me was studying what the competitors are doing bad. But mm -hmm. truly, you need both. You need to know what they're doing bad so you can be better, what they're doing well. So, you know, if they're doing this well, we're going to be here, but then we're going to go up to here. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. No, I mean, with, with, the, uh, uh, with the tracking, the history tracking, you, you, you can see both. Um, I, 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 so we get an A for functionality and we get a D for, uh, for being able to make it obvious that it's there uh, because this is one of the most, one of the coolest features is to be able to dig down that deep and see this. And you, you're sort of getting, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a story. You're getting a story of what, and you can read, you can get so much about the, about this competitor from, um, what they're doing and how often they do it. You can tell whether they're, you know, a small, are they relatively, you know, unsophisticated or do they have pretty, pretty elaborate repricing? Um, sometimes, uh, for example, we found there was this weird thing where we kept on seeing people changing their photos 
um, and wonder, well, why is that? And it turns out that changing your photos can help you help you when you have um, when you when you're doing pay 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 per click. Um, it can help you get more more exposure. So there are little things you pick up, and you go, like, "Why is that person doing that?" Um, and and you can see also here, for example, um, this this guy's review uh, uh, reviews are going up and down. Like I would look into that and see what is that all about. Um, sometimes these things have big impacts, and sometimes they don't. That also that's also interesting. Um, you know, and then they go off the charts, and that usually means that that they were they, that they were sold out for a while. So you're starting to really get uh, a, a true picture of 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 your, each of your competitors. And the reason this is this is is interesting is if you end up going and 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 you know pulling the trigger and you decide, okay, I'm going to order I'm going to order some 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 shock pumps and 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 I'm going to start competing. You can add your product in here, and it's like you joined the game, you know. And while you were, you know, hopefully while you were sitting in the bleach, uh, not in the bleachers, on the on the bench, you were paying attention to the game because you're going to get in there, and all of a sudden you're playing, and uh, you better know who you're playing against. I'll never forget the day when I was searching a maze out, and one of my products popped up as high potential. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud. It's like, oh, yeah. This but then you asked us, you asked us to remove it from the search. <laughs> well, it made me a little nervous. I'm like, oh shoot, other people are gonna fight it now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's a few questions I'm gonna tackle. So, let's see here. I'm gonna go back. Okay. So Jigar says, great question. How about the product that has been recently invented and has no trending data, no BSR? Is it worth the investment? So Jigar, there's three kinds of products you can sell on Amazon. Three. There's Retail and online arbitrage, that would be like selling, let's say, I don't know, but let's say this tea is well known, it's in a lot of grocery stores, you go buy it at discount and you sell it on Amazon and you piggyback on someone else's listing, which in private label we would call hijacking, but in retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, it's totally fair, you can do that, it's already in the catalog and you're just selling at a lower price. That's retail online arbitrage. You're, you're buying a discount and you're reselling it. The next level, and this is what we focus on in our training program, is private label. So private label being an example might be something as simple as a bracelet, but it's a unique kind of, it's unique in some way. It's a different color, different thickness, different material. It fixes a problem no one else is doing. It's a generic product. No one, it's not heavily advertised as a certain brand people always go to, like Nike shoes or World Refrigerators. This is, would be private label. And so this is where we are putting our logo on a generic product and we're selling it and we're proving it's better than everyone else's, okay? And, the, and you'll see how this answers your question, Jigar. And the third one would be inventing a new product. This is one of my favorite examples, Bob. I don't know if you've seen these or not. These are called rooster stands. This stand, you would think I own this, and I don't have any affiliate yeah. relationship with these people at all. These things are badass. Every single time I'm at a coffee shop working, people come by and ask me, what is this? Yesterday, someone came by and asked if they could take pictures of it. People don't know what this is at first until they see it in action. This would be a new product. And so, Jigar, this is what you're talking about, something that people don't know about. Now, here's the, the, here's the risk and the benefit. If you come out with a new product, you're going to spend a lot more money because you need to educate people that they need the product. If they don't know, they won't buy. The easy thing about this, retail arbitrage, you make your money fast because they already know about it. Oh, yeah, I'll buy it. Okay? Private label takes a little more time because you have to convince them that yours is the best. They don't know who you are but they still know about the product type. Whereas if it's a new product, completely new, patented, trademarked, whatever you want to call it, okay, now we're talking about education. So you have to spend more time educating the customer so they know they need it and then they buy it. So if you're starting out and your capital is limited, I would not go with a brand new product. I would go with a product people already you know want. But as you make more money and have more margin, now you can start doing your own unique products like truly new products and inventions and patents and you can get them on um uh what is it called kickstarter and indiegogo and get funding that way or just use your own money so that that's what i would recommend with that uh, marvin says is it possible to export the data from a to excel or pdf bob that question is for you brother yeah so um the answer is yes for your um potential products so you'll see if you go to the potential products list. My list is pretty short in this profile. Um, I didn't want to give away all my secret 
bike related things. But uh, you'll see here there's there's um, a download uh, link here, and this downloads as a CSV file. So you can you can um, put as many products in here as you want, and uh, and then download them, and then you import the CSV into Excel. Um, there's instructions on 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 uh, Google to see you know how do you, how do you do this because you have to. In our case, I think it's it's uh, comma separated, and you just have to make sure you do that, and then it will it'll populate Excel properly. So the answer is yes. In um, tracked products, we don't really have a good way right now of doing this, and um, it's it's sort of problematic because you can see we have so much data that's embedded in here, here, here. Um, how to organize that data so that uh, so that you can you know play with it, especially when it comes to competitors, because that all those competitors are associated to this group. So we don't have a way of doing that. Uh, you can. <clears throat> you could, there are some uh, 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 like uh, screen snap or these types of softwares that you can do a, a screen grab, a, a scrolling screen grab. Uh, that's a workaround for the moment. But once we've figured out how, how to do that um, better, uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll implement it. The other thing that we're working on is to be able to share parts or all of your, um, what you're, what you're looking at, like say for example, I wanted, um, you know, the guy that's 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 helping me, mentoring me. I want to say, okay, have a look at this. Then we'll be able to say, okay, share this, and you'd be able to share certain parts of it, um, or all of all of that product, or all of your track products. Depends on what you want, um, because oftentimes you want a second opinion, and this is is a great is a great environment to do that because the data is all there. Yeah. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, it may sound a constantly changing, growing, we, you know, I mean it in a good way. <laughs> um, constantly, <laughs> constantly updating to get better. Um, yeah, one of the biggest opportunities I think is just the user end experience, just making it more simple, easy to use. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's one yeah, thing. Well, that's, that other that's what uh, I'll, I'll show you because um, if I'm showing right now, I can show you that. Um, yeah, can you? I can show you on my wall. That's that's our product development. So that's that's related to our design design uh, refinements. We're I can't, working on it. I can't see your wall because your screen's sharing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's not that interesting anyway. It's a bunch of post-it <laughs> notes. <laughs> so awesome. All right. So I'm gonna. We have more questions. I'll take those in a minute, you guys. Um, but I'm gonna share. Is there anything else you want to share on your product research before I jump and share? The techniques that I use, Bob. Um, the only so to answer the question um, that was brought up earlier about how do I know uh, if this is if this is interesting, uh, this is a so the, the the what I would come away with is mixed mixed uh, mixed feedback on 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 this one. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is if it's not a hundred thousand, you tend not to go after something that has less than 100,000 searches. And uh, ease of entry is so-so. Uh, there aren't that many competitors, uh, strong competitors. Uh, there was something I wanted to show you. There was actually a shoe in there, um, which is, is not a bug. It's That's that's a high ranking for those keywords, is high ranking on Amazon. Um, uh, but you have to clean up this list. And then you, you see there, there are really actually only three strong competitors here. If I was to raise this, for example, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get more of them. But um, you know, this would say to me, okay, let me watch this. See, this is going to add some more in here. But neither of these results are 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 relevant to me. Um, so the list is still short. I would I would watch this for a while and see see what happens. Um, there's no you know there's no kind of like oh god I'm all over this and there's no this is a this is a waste of time. So that's how that's how I would go about this. Um, not a product. I just did this here. I haven't looked at it before. So um, that's what I would say with this one. OK. Awesome. Thank you, man. Um, so guys, I hope that's helpful. Um, notice, too, that he needs to watch it, because right now there's only three competitors. That's an indication the demand may not be strong enough. So if you find a product that has really good BSR but very few competitors, you need a good reason to source that product. Competitors is a good thing. 
most of us think of it as a bad thing. It's a good thing as long as it's not too much. Why does that matter? Well, there's a number we like to use on the Just One Dime team as a general guideline, as many competitors as you, the limit on how many top performing competitors you want to have. And I'm going to show it to you guys in a minute. Hey, Bob, if you want to stop sharing your screen, I'm going to share mine. Sure. And then I'll walk you guys through the process that I use. Okay. So watch this, you guys. So I'm going to go share my screen. Give me one moment, everyone. You're going to see major inception. Okay. Let's go to a different window. I'll just go to a completely different window. Okay. So let's just go to Amazon.com. And... Let's type in, give me a word to type in. What's, what's a product you want me to search, Bob? Oh, um, it's going to be bicycle related. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Bicy go ahead. What, what do you want? Um, let's say a um, bicycle seat cover. Bicycle seat cover. Awesome. I don't think I spelled that right, did I? B. No, it looks like it. B I B Y. No, no, that's correct. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's BI. All right. Um, so check this out, guys. So notice on this page, you got sponsored and sponsored. The reason these two are showing up is because someone's paying money for it to be here. It's not an organic search result. It's a paid ad search result. So those don't count. But I'm going to go below that, and I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I see 23 search results. 70% of all buys are going to be on this page for bike seat cover. So if you show up on the second page, your chance of selling it just dropped 70%. So I have just over 20 search results that are not sponsored, so ignore those. That means the reason they're showing up is because they're ranking well. Their keywords are good. They're having decent sales. So why do we limit the number of competitors? If the competitors, and I mean top competitors, guys, if you have 10,000 competitors, I wouldn't worry about it because most of those people in all respect don't know what they're doing because most people don't go and get knowledge before they start a business. They just go start. They don't actually try to understand so they can increase their chance of success and scale faster. Therefore, the few people who actually know how to do it well, they're, they're, the result is they're getting all these search results showing up here. If you are competing and you have over 20 top performing competitors, it's going to take a lot more time and ad spending on money to get yourself on this first page which means you're, it's, gonna, it's just going to be a longer path. But if there are under 20, and I use that as a general guideline, competitors, top performing competitors, the ones that are showing up here, it's much easier to get on this first page. Because if some of these people don't know what they're doing and they're getting on the first page, well, you who know what you're doing definitely can get on the first page. So that's one of the key things I do is I need to know there's enough competition that tells me there's demand, but it's low enough where I can get on the first page easily. And 20 is a general guideline. Now, if you're in the clothing category, which my wife and I sell a lot in the clothing category, it's different, especially based on the subcategory. Sometimes there will be 50 search results on the first page. So it can change based on the category, but as a general rule, 20 is the number I like to limit it to. The second thing I want to share, and I'm going to go to Amazo now. Let's just do this. I want to give you guys an exact picture of just what this looks like in my brain. Now check this out. We have Amazon.com. Amazon.co.uk for those of you guys in the United Kingdom. Amazon works for the United Kingdom, which is super cool. And we'll talk about, a little bit about that later. Um, so, Bob, I'm just going to go with the word you gave me. Okay. I'm going to go with bicycle seat. Cover. And cover? Okay. So, did you see what he did, guys? Look, if we just did bicycle, that's super, super broad. Way too broad. Okay, if we go with seat, that's a little more niche down. But now we're going to go with cover. Now we're really specific. Why is that important? Because it gives me a better, it's better to compete and dominate a pond than a lake or an ocean. In other words, find a category small enough where you can actually beat the competition. If you're trying to sell something as generic as, you know, clothing, for example, that's crazy. How are you going to compete with all the big brands out there? But if you niche it down to headbands that are made out of cotton from the country of, 
uh, Peru, now you have a very specific niche you can crush. See what I mean, you guys? So this, that's exactly what Bob just did. We're going all the way down to bicycle seat cover. And I'm going to go with this one right here. It popped up. Tells me to save. Now, the reason this one is saying save it is because based on the settings I set up in out, it's telling me, hey, this is a good product. It's under a pound. It's not more than 12 inches in any direction. It fits in a shoebox. It has a certain BSR in order to make sure it's selling well. It's, it's matching those. It's saving me time. And I'm going to hit save. And then we're going to go and look at it. And interesting, that's a sponsored one as well. huh? So that's an indication they're doing ads and they're doing what organically. I'm going to remember Zachro so I can find it easily. I'm going to return to the dashboard here. And now I have this potential product right here. Now the first thing I look at, BSR is incredibly awesome. 2842. It's selling very well. On every day estimated it has 11 sales. I trust these numbers because I've tested them hundreds of times with my own products and they're always usually typically within one or two numbers accurate. So my sales might be 13, this is 11. My sales might be 9 or 10, these are 11. So that is why I trust these. Whatever you guys do when you use a tool, test its accuracy so you actually are getting good information. Don't just use it if it's easy to use, test how good it is. It only has 23 reviews, that's good, that means I have a chance to compete. Um, it's daily. They're making one hundred seventy-six dollars. That's not too bad. If I do seventy-six times a month revenue, so if he, even half of that was income, so they're making twenty-five. I'm going to type in what's called a long tail keyword, not a short tail, long tail. In other words, it's specific enough to give me that niche. So I'm actually going to use exactly what Bob had mentioned. I'm going to type in bicycle seat cover tracking now what it's doing you guys is it's pulling up and tell me if this is accurate Bob because you know this better than me it's pulling up on the first three to four pages of Amazon all high-ranking BSR products with this keyword attached to it yeah so the the um, what we're doing is we're, we're going through Amazon as though as though we were an end consumer uh, who's searching that keyword and we're parsing all of the results. So um, We're seeing it as the end consumer would see it and that's that's what's crucial because that's where you want to that's where you want to end up playing, right? right. Um, uh, that's correct. That's that's exactly what we do. All right now the first thing my eyes go to is right here This matters to me if that th what this means is there are 3830 other products coming up with this keyword, it doesn't mean it's necessarily the same product. Amazon has no way to know that. It's just pulling what's on Amazon. That's why I have to go over here and filter them. But based on this information, there's about almost 4,000 competitors. Now, guys, don't let that freak you out. I've made a lot of money with way more competitors than this, over 10,000. What matters is the number seven. These are the top performing competitors in so far as I know. And I'll show you how to, how to qualify that. There's only seven, that's a good sign. There's not 20 or more, so I can still show up on the first page easily, but there's not so few that I'm really concerned. The seven is a little bit low. As a general rule, I want my competitors to be between five and 20, but ideally, somewhere between 10 and 15 for me is, is awesome. The other thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna click on this. If I click on this, it's gonna show me these seven competitors. So I click on there. And now I can go and find out, okay, are these competitors actually the kind of product?
I, I've been, uh, I think I, I think I, uh, you've been muted, Seth. Oh my goodness. I've been muted this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am so sorry, you guys. I was walking through talking and talking and talking. Ah, ah, next time. Tell me, Bob. <laughs> sorry. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was something I did. Gotcha on your end. Okay. So sorry, you guys. Oh my goodness. I feel terrible. Um, yeah, I'm a robot. <laughs> you guys didn't know that I'm really a robot. <laughs> ah, okay. You guys must have been so frustrated. I apologize. Okay. I will go through that again right now. Um, Bob, if I go mute, you got to tell me, brother. All, All right, right. Here we go. Well, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Can you, can you hear me, Bob? I can definitely hear you now. Okay, awesome. What I was saying, you guys, is on the bicycle seat cover, the most important thing is the, is the revenue, the daily revenue, because that tells me the demand. So what I do is I say, okay, these seven, what it's just telling me is there are about 3,830 competitors, insofar as we know, based on that keyword, that are selling this product on the first three to four pages of Amazon. Any page beyond that, just forget about it. No one even goes there hardly. Of those 3,000, these seven are the very top competitors. They're making the majority of the money. And if you take those seven, their combined revenue is 1471 a day. So the question is, what is my chance of getting a piece of that income? So all I do is I just go 14, 1471. Can you actually see this, Bob? Yeah, everything looks good. I take 1471 and I divide it by seven. That indicates I could make $210. I'm going to go back, make sure I'm not muted. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. So what I do is I just divide that 1471 by seven competitors and that tells me it's around $210. That's how much potential revenue I can make per day based on this seat cover. If you multiply that by 30 and divide it by half, so 30 for 30 days and let's say I made half the profit, we're looking at around $6,000 profit for this product potentially if I make as much as one of these guys are making. Now, what I was sharing before, and I think you guys weren't able to hear me, back here, I'm gonna show you something. Look, right here, you guys see this? The number of competitors matters is if I was a customer and I searched for bicycle seat cover, 70% of all the sales are gonna be from this first page. So if your product is on the second page, your chance of selling it just drops 70%. More than 20 competitors top competitors for this product, it's gonna be a lot harder for me to get on this first page because they know what they're doing. And in all respect to other Amazon sellers, most of them out there, they don't get the knowledge and training, they just go and do it. And therefore they don't succeed as well because they don't have the knowledge needed. Therefore the only competitors I care about are these seven right here. These are the ones I'm competing with. I, don't, I could care less about these. It's just these. If that number was 20, check this out, there are about 20 Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are about 20 products showing up, excluding the sponsored on this page. If there's more than 20, my chance of getting on this first page is greatly, at, is much more at risk. Therefore, if they have fewer than 20, my chance of getting on this page, I have a much greater chance of crushing it by selling my product. And that's why the number of competitors matter. So again, the number one rule that I use is are the sales there? Because this tells me, 1471, that on Amazon.com, there are people conglomerately, they have cash to pay $1,400 every day for this product. That's, that's understanding the market, not the product, the market. And that's where most people get it wrong. They focus on the product, but it's not about the product, you guys. It is about the market for the product. Because no one buys a bicycle seat cover so they can hang it on their wall. They buy it because they want a cover for the seat for their butt. Like they're solving a problem. So when you guys sell on Amazon, do not look at a product, look at the solution the product provides. And when you do that, you understand the market. When you understand the market, you start thinking bigger like, oh, there's 1471. Okay, 
I can do this product, but I can make a much better one because I'm going to focus on the solution, not, oh, I'm going to sell what they're selling because everyone's selling and it must sell. That's very rookie thinking. Ask this question. What are the competitors failing at? How can I absolutely do better than they are? And so again, going back to this number, this number is the key for understanding demand. And this number is key for knowing what are my chances. If this was only three competitors, I'd be very concerned. That tells me the market is very slim for this kind of product. All right, I'll stop there. Um, Bob, anything you want to add to that? And can you still hear me okay? Yeah, I can still hear you, can still see you. Yep, I'll you're still in the room. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll click, I'll look at some of these questions here. Um, okay, here's a good question. It's a 2.1 demand. Um, do you want to, can you speak to that? The stars that come up in Amazon. Mm -hmm. This is a 2.1, this is a three, this is a four. How seriously should we take those stars? What are your thoughts? Do you have a certain limitation that you use? Well, if it's at least not three, I won't go with it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a good one. I, this is where where I, I'd say that um, you you have to use a little bit of your own kind of you, you have to make the choice for yourself. Ultimately, what we're we're telling you is it's the demand is not huge. Um, it's not gonna. It's likely not gonna. You know, it's not gonna be a a, a home run product for you. There's just not enough demand out there. Right. But if you know. I had an interesting conversation with one of our users um, who said that they were interested also in products that sell less than one per day. Um, and so there's, there are many strategies. Uh, yeah. and, and so I, I can't tell you either way. I can just tell you if it's one or, 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 or worse, um, not a good idea if it's five definitely look more closely at that in between it's it's your choice um whether you know you want to be you want to be it's it of course you're going to be you're going to have more more competitors there um fighting fighting over a smaller piece of pie and you have to decide whether you want that if you want it sort of um set and forget then um that might be harder for you to get a uh you know a reasonable amount of of business so yeah uh, between two and four, that's kind of your discretion. Uh, can answer that one. It's the same with it's the same with any of the indices. Those are those are not kind of they're not uh, green or red light. There right. there are some red lights there, yeah, and there are some guidelines. green lights, but there's yeah. a lot of sort of gray. It's the same reason when I sell products, they don't always match all the parameters. I sell products that are over a pound. I sold products that are more than four hundred, I think fifty three grams, which is equal to a pound. Um, longer than 12 inches, um, the demand was not 100,000 for the short tail keyword and still made a lot of money. But there were other pieces that were so strong, it justified it in my mind. I mean, guys, if you find a product that meets just every, meets every single criteria perfectly, then I would like, you know. Be suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to bury the product. Like, what is weird here? It's, it's not, this is where it's not totally a science. You have to use a little bit of intuition and look at the market and get a feel for it, guys. These are general guidelines or general parameters. Um, there's a ton of questions, and we'll get to them the best that we can. Um, okay, so D, I'll start in backwards order. D Dola says, Seth, when will you be able to go back and change the initial keywords used? And I'll share something I do know about this. You can add other keywords on D Dola, and in the, there's different, Amazel's free, but if you get a subscription version, you can add on up to 50 different keywords. So for example, let me put it this way. Imagine I'm selling coat hangers, and I'm selling these coat hangers, which also are really cool eyeglasses, and I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm selling coat hangers. Looks like the Amazel logo. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> Amazel on acid. <laughs> <laughs> This is too fun. Um, <laughs> so I'm selling coat hangers. All right, Nidula. Now some people are going to look, they're going to search clothing hangers. This will solve their problem. Other people are going to search coat hangers. This will solve their problem. Others are going to search clothes hangers. This will solve their problem. So there's all these different keywords people are going to search. But if my product ans fulfills all, all those different people's needs, because everyone thinks different, Didola, what you might call one kind of hanger, I might call different because we're different parts of the country or the world. Therefore, the key is I need to find all the keywords that would result in people wanting this product. You can do that in Amazon. You can add on other keywords. 
Um, another, okay, we got a bunch of stuff coming in here. Um, you won't see many competitors. Andrew says, let's see, he's responding to someone else. Okay, Chris says this, wouldn't it be better to find products with bad reviews so you can stomp them with your own? 100% agree with you, uh, Chris. This is how I started making very good money in Amazon. But, but the product still needed a good demand. Here, here's, you just stumbled upon something awesome, Chris, and I'm gonna share this with you guys. And this is something, I don't know if I've ever shared this before. Go find a product that's crap. I know this is gonna be totally against intuition. For some people, I'm trying to build a brand. Why would I sell a crappy product? But just hear me out, okay, guys? If you're trying to make money, go find a product that's crap. Okay, let's just say it's a, a tape measure and it's terrible. It, in general, all these tape measures are bad. I know I'm making a super big assumption by saying that. Have you ever seen this, guys, where every time you see one of these products, it's got like two to three star reviews. It's terrible, but people are still buying it. What does that tell me? Okay, if people are buying these products, even though they're getting bad reviews, what does that mean? That means the demand is extreme, but the quality, even though the quality is low, which means there's tons of demand. It's very easy to improve on a crappy product than it is to improve on an excellent product. And you will make some serious money. So your product doesn't have to be crap. I'm just saying it's a lot easier. That's one key that I would recommend. The other one, and Bob, you stumbled upon this. I, this is so perfect uh, timing. When you were searching, Bob, for that shock uh, pump, mm -hmm. and you didn't find any on your first search in Alibaba, to me, that is a huge opportunity. Because have you guys noticed this? You go to Alibaba, you search a keyword, and you go, oh, it's the exact same product that everyone's selling on Amazon. Well, how easy it is for a competitor to go buy it and sell it with their logo, and someone else buy it. And all these people are now selling exactly what you're selling. But if you can't find it on Alibaba, that means you're going to have to look harder and longer, everyone, and you're going to have to find a supplier who builds something similar and have them build it, and it's going to cost more time and money. But once you have it built, oh my goodness, now you have a differentiation opportunity because it's not all over Alibaba, and by the time it starts to show up on Alibaba, you are already ranking. Like you already have 2,000, 2,500 BSR. So in other words, you sacrificed up front to beat the competition in the future. That's another opportunity. Now, if you're just starting out, guys, and you're low on capital, that may not work for you because a lot of them are going to charge you three, two grand for a new mold, for example, just to make that new kind of coat hanger that you want with a different hook and no one else has it. And then someone else could buy it from the supplier and benefit off of your work. But remember, if you're ahead, if you start, it's just like the, uh, I forget how many, I think it's the 25 Irrefutable Laws of Marketing book. They talk about um, if you are first, you will get the majority of the sales if you're first. In other words, everyone's selling coat hangers, but we're going to come out with a better one, which means I spend more money, have to find a supplier, have to design it. It's a lot more work. Once it's done, now you're way ahead of the competition. And I'll add one more tip to that. When you do this, everyone, that supplier can market your product to other Amazon sellers, which I know that sucks. That's horrible. One way to fix that problem is two ways. Number one, they build it, you assemble it. So if it has parts like this, for example, it has parts. Have someone in your country assemble it, not the supplier. And they don't know what it is. That takes a little more time. The other way is, yeah, they build it for you. They know what it is. But you have a different supplier create the packaging. And a different supplier add on an accessory. And you put it together here in the U.S. or Germany or wherever you are. Now, no supplier knows how you're bundling it. They're not going to show your exact product in Alibaba. It'll take a lot longer, maybe months, maybe years for another supplier to actually uh, sell exactly what you're selling, which means, again, you're ahead of the competition. Can you still hear me okay, Bob? Yep, loud and yep, clear. Loud and okay. clear. Awesome. There are a ton of questions in here. I want to get to all of them. I mean, um, it is blowing up, brother. Uh, okay, so I'll answer these briefly and quickly. Andrew says, oh, he's responding to an answer. Awesome, thank you, Andrew. Uh, okay, I'm looking. Okay, Andrew says this. I've seen people with the same amount of units of 250, but the items are way larger, so it's way more expensive, like $20 each, so your investment changes drastically. Yes, absolutely. Andrew says, after that, you have to check with your ROI. Your return on investment would be for each and see is it worth it, worth it or not. Absolutely. Uh, Marco says, Seth, can you give an example of an improvement you have made that worked? Marco, there are two. I'm not going to give an exact example because I'm not going to tell the whole world the products I sell, but I'll give you generic enough that you could apply it to anything. There are two kinds of ways you can differentiate. 
perception value and real value. Perception value is things like, you know, you buy your Apple iPhone and it's in super nice packaging. Does that packaging make this phone worth more? Not really. I'm going to throw the packaging in the trash. I might keep it in my garage for a year. That's nice. But that's all perception, man, right? That's complete perception. It just looks better. And yet people will pay more because it has better packaging. Yet the quality of the product has not changed at all. So it's very cheap to increase things in perception. Color, the, the, the paint that they use, the packaging, that kind of stuff. Uh, the photos, that's perception value. Real value would be I'm going to actually make it thicker. I'm going to use a different material. I'm going to make it waterproof. That's real value. That's much more expensive. So those are the two ways you can differentiate. What I did, Marco, is I found products. I read the critical reviews. I found out what wasn't working. I'll give you an example. One of the products, it was leaking constantly. It has to do with liquid. That's as much as I'll say. So I went and fixed it. I found a supplier. We tested it. We put all different kinds of liquid inside, made sure it worked, and boom, we started selling. It took a while to get going. We didn't run any ads. I was very rookie at this. But by the time it started selling, it continued to continue more and more until it started making us over 10,000 revenue a month, that one product. But that took a lot of work to get to that point. Um, T. Drew says, don't the stars have to add up to over five? Like Bob said, um, T. Drew, it, it's, there isn't an exact number. I like to use three. So three and three, so six for me. Um, Hamant says, I just lost it. Sorry, guys. It, it, it just scrolled down really fast here. Um, I get a lot of visitors but no purchases. How do I fix that? Jonathan, if you're getting a lot of visitors but no purchases, the issue is not discoverability. Good job. You're discoverable. That's awesome. That's good. There's always two parts. The issue is your, your product is not good enough, the perception of it. People don't think it's worth buying. So you got to fix your product perception. If the product's really good but you're not advertising it well or your photos aren't good, people aren't going to buy. You have to make that listing look badass spend hours and hours and hours making it look amazing. You know, Bob, this concept, you know, just, it's super simple, but it hit me the other day and I love it. It's simple. It's, if someone, okay, people are going to keep buying an Amazon. We know that. People will keep buying an Amazon. But if someone simply provides a solution, a product that fixes a problem, and it's better than everyone else's, and the price is competitive, you're going to make money. Yeah. That's that's the beauty. That's the beauty of Amazon. It's 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 a it's a great leveler. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's it doesn't matter if it's a massive corporation over here or people who've been in it for fifteen years over here. Some people I ran into have been at Amazon for 15, 20 years. This is no offense to anyone here if you have been. Okay, this isn't personal, but they've lost touch with Amazon constantly changing, and they're doing things the way Amazon did them ten years ago, and they're starting to lose to individuals like one guy, one girl, and they're crushing it because that man or woman, they are thinking, how do I do this smart? They're small and they're mobile and they can move fast and they're crushing these bigger companies. They've been doing it for years. Knowledge. You get knowledge, you learn, and man, you can absolutely crush it with the knowledge that you have. Guys, yes. this has been really fun. I want to honor Bob's time. I want to honor your time. It's been over an hour. I, I do want to share our special announcement. So I'm going to go to that right now. Um, Bob and I, Amaze out and just one dime. There's more to just one dime than me, and there's more to Amaze out than Bob. We decided to put together a bundle for you guys where you get. Well, actually, I just need to show them really quick, Bob. I'm going to show you guys right now. Check this out. Let me go to share my screen. I know tons of you guys have been asking about this, so I just want to show you. What about the product database? If I. For example, was to come in here and let's say I'm looking for anything in, let's do sports. What these are, let me make sure the other one's unselected. I don't want color. What this is, is Amy Zhao has parsed a ton of search terms on Amazon. And how many millions do you guys get? It's insane how many products you guys are, are getting. But Basically, it's going through Amazon and finding high potential products, which reduces the time you need. To, it's like condensed, guys. It's not like I have to go through 400 products to find one potential. It's you go through way fewer. Now, if I just go through here, and you can see, look, I got 27 pages in Sports and Outdoors of potential products. It doesn't mean I'm going to sell it. It does mean it's way closer to being potential based on the size 
and the weight and the BSR. And I can immediately see, look, look at this one, guys. The Birdie Design Steel Hitch. Its ranking is awesome. It has only 72 reviews. Its weight is light. It's very small. It's making 275 a day. It's grossing 275 a day. Bam, I just found it right there. I didn't have to go to Amazon and search for something in a category. So basically, this gives me access to a filtered list of high potential products already there. The thing this does, guys, is what's called an established plan. Is a 50 keywords I can monitor it and find out what keywords it is ranking for, which is super helpful when I'm trying to understand a product category. The other thing it does is it gives me access, check this out, to amazon.co.uk. So now I don't just have amazon.com for any of you guys selling in UK, which by the way is growing a lot, uh, even more than Canada, I can now hunt for products here. And so now I have the, access, the opportunity, check this out, now I'm on up here, co.uk, I have all the research tools for United Kingdom as well. And I can start searching, it's funny, we got a bunch of fidget spinners. It's like the new garlic press. <laughs> fidget spinners, the world we live in. <laughs> I keep telling my wife, Bob, the gym is my fidget spinner. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm antsy, I go to the gym. <laughs> I just don't understand the fidget spinner, but I understand some people like it. So, <laughs> um, But anyways, what this is, you guys, it's called an established plan. It gives you access to all these different tools. My personal favorite, Bob, and I know different people are going to use different things, is a product database because I have access to so many hundreds and thousands of products now that without having to go through and search through all way through all these not potential products i can find them quickly and up here check this out you guys i can just click on baby for example and i'll take off or I'll just leave that and then i hit search and now it's going to include the baby category i can do it by category i can change the review number i can change the bsr i can change the price 12 to 85 is my preference i can change the size and boom now we have all these potential baby products coming in and we have 47 pages this time of products. So what we did, you guys, is we Bob and I got together and we decided we're going to give you the established version, which includes all these extra things, of a maze out. That's normally a $200 value for a year. Plus, we're going to give you all the Just One Dime training. That includes advice from lawyers. That includes all the hacks that we teach. It includes over 70 exclusive videos. It includes eight coaches who answers your questions. It includes three huge potential products. I could go on and on and on. It's tons. It includes a team of almost 300 people, many of whom will buy and review your product for you to help it get ranking. Um, it includes over 3,000 people who are on review lists from Germany, United Kingdom, Canada, and the US. So you can actually reach out to these people to get your product promoted within Amazon's terms of service. And it includes a lifetime access to Keyword Tool Dominator, which is super cool because that actually... Uh, <laughs> It basically, for the rest of your life, you get access to a tool that shows you all the autocomplete searches on Amazon and you in their ranking. So for example, if you're selling a coffee mug and you're wondering what keyword should I use, in Keyword Tool Dominator, you just type in coffee mug and it'll show you all the sub or the long tail, like coffee mug brown, coffee mug ceramic. Which ones apply to mine? I'm going to use those. And they're pulled directly from Amazon. They're not global search volume. So we put all this together in one package. And with Amazow, you get this for an entire year. So basically, you have access to all the tools of Amazow, just one dime. And by the way, with just one dime, and some of the people here can tell you they're on our team, you get three hours of coaching a week live. That's me. That's other coaches. That's Melissa, who gives this awesome every Sunday night conference call to help your brain be in the right place, your mind, your heart, so you're ready for success. Three hours of coaching every week for an entire year. All of this. And we're doing this as a one bundle. This is the first time Amazow and Just One Dime have teamed up to do something together that you can invest in. Now, if I went back to my beginning stages when I first started Amazon, I would have invested in this bundle. If I built it in a way, Bob, that I knew I would need it when I started and could have ramped up so much faster and made fewer <laughs> mistakes as a result. So this is our first time to do it. I'm super excited. Um, guys, we're doing it for this week only. One week, you have this opportunity. If you want to invest in it, you may. I already included the link this morning on the product description. And yep, you will get all of this. Um, and Sam, yes, you always have to do market demand research for any product. Yes, what it's doing, Sam, is you know when you go to Amazon.com and you're with Amazow and you're looking for it says save? 
save, save, and you, you're looking for high potential, what it does is it filters it down to a condensed filter list of ones that it already would recommend as high potential. Does that make sense? So it's saving you time, but you still need to look at your competitors. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for a low price of 4999 No, Didola, it is not that much. The value is really close to that. So you're very intuitive, brother. Um, it's it's $1,000. It's a one-time payment and for an entire year. How can we take this bundle you're offering, Seth? Um, it's right there in the product description, Andrea. You'll just see it right there if you guys want to get it. And we're just doing it for this week. Uh, for the memberships you paid up to now, what you can do, Easy Creations, is it will cancel all subscriptions and you would never pay anything more from then on for that for the next year. You get access to everything. So if you're already a Just One Dime member, you can get this. And it'll if you're on a subscription, it'll cancel that. Absolutely. Um, if I see a new product massive hit in my country and it's still not a hit in the U.S., I think it's a good product for Amazon. No, I would search each country, Eli, based on the country. That's really important. Um, what if we're part of your program already? How can we get the rest of the bundle? So if you, so here's the thing. If you're on a subscription tool, then what I would do is I would get the bundle and there's no more monthly payments. You end up saving a lot of money. I mean, divide 1,000 by 12. Like it's, it's a very low number. Yeah. The 99 works also in the European marketplace. Andrea, yes, it absolutely does. Absolutely. We have, we have almost 300 people on our team. We, are, we have people from 46 different countries. A large portion of them are in the United Kingdom or selling in Europe. Uh, Italy, Germany. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. United Kingdom. Yep. So, and we actually have coaches who are in those countries selling who specialize. They have Google Hangouts just for you to talk about unique things that you're dealing with the United Kingdom that you're not in Canada or that you're not in the U.S. So, is it equal to silver? Sindri, it's better. Um, you end up spending, spending way less money and you get a lot more. Yeah. Cancel means credit. Um, cancel, I don't know what you mean, Easy Creations. You have to chat me on that one. Where's the link? It's in the, it's in the about link, you guys. Do you have a video where you explain how it works? I do. I'll share it, you guys, really quick. I'll just chat it here into the chat so you guys have it, so you can see it. Um, plus, you guys, in a sense, you're getting just one dime. You're getting a maze out. You're getting Keyword Tool Dominator. You're getting Lawyer Advice. Like We built it so everything you need is all in one package. And for the next year, you can just focus on making money and building up your store. But I'll share it right here. It's amaze. Um, that is the link right there, you guys. But I think RA is worth it. Um, absolutely. In fact, that's a great place to start, Didula. Absolutely. Um, it, if you can give me a strong tip on finding a potential product, what would it be? Jonathan Kahn's, um, we teach that in our coaching program. I think the question, you need to change it to not a potential product, but a potential market. That's where you want to start. Do you provide service for India users? We absolutely do. Um, we don't have, Amazal does not work for India, no. But we do not teach yet. people in India. What's that? Not, not yet. yet. Yes. Not yet, yeah. We, we have, have to do Canada first because I'm Canadian. <laughs> He's biased, what can I say? <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, in India, we have many people who are in India on our team. Yes, some selling in .com, some selling in India. If I'm in Italy, I ask to Danilo how it works, 999 method, because I've never used it. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can ask him, and you can also send me an email, too, if that helps. But yeah, it's, it's all inclusive. So if, yeah. Um, it's for USA and United Kingdom, Dr. Green. So if you have a new product, where would you advertise? On Amazon only. I would advertise on Amazon. I know a lot of people are saying advertise on Facebook. I wouldn't do that until you're a multi-million dollar company and then do it. So can you sell on Amazon.com if you live in Canada? Absolutely. We have many people who do that. Canada is less saturated, but also less demand. Um, Dale Cooper, I will send me an email, Dale Cooper, and I'll work with you. Yep, absolutely. I totally understand. I will work with you because I, I understand. You signed up a week ago. Um, I told you it's for USA. It's also for United Kingdom. Um, how would you upgrade me? Um, you just go to the link. It'll automatically stop your membership, and it'll re replace it with this one. What is a good sales number per day as a starter? As a general rule of thumb, I look for at least 900 a day in the U.S., 800 a day in the U.K., 700 a day in Canada. That is that is my minimum that I'll go with before selling a product in any of those three places. Um, sales numbers do mean something because if you don't have sales numbers, Dr. Green, you're not going to make any money. But yes, you have to look over look at profit as well. First, you need to know it has strong sales. Then you look at the profit and make sure it's profitable for you. How are the demand levels in easy of entry level stars calculated in Amazow? That's a question I'll let you email Amazow about. 
because there's there's algorithms that are behind the scenes on that you've all but that's a good question yeah yeah no problem to deal absolutely um entrepreneur rob signed up on monday yeah entrepreneur rob if you want to jump over to this one that's fine just shoot me an email cool well bob any last words uh man before we go <laughs> no um the only thing i would add is that is to tie into the conversation we had before about finding products is that the the nice thing about the product database is if you are stumped for ideas it's a great place to go to start the crems the kind of your best and oh i can't think of any ideas and you you never even look in industrial you can look in all the different categories because uh, that it's it's a great place to also get inspired and it's inspired based on you know what's actually selling right now it cut out there just get for, that? it cut out there just for a minute but I, I heard the gist of it yeah okay. um, it, someone said can I pay in spinners <laughs> <laughs> If you, send me you can't pay us in spinners. I can't stand <laughs> those things. <laughs> I, my kid loves them because all the kids at school have them. It's now a trending thing, you know? Like in the 1980s, it was fanny packs. Those things are so funny. You know what I'm talking about, Bob? Where they have the little packs that go on your waist, kind of half sure. in your butt. Those were yeah. so popular in the 1980s. Now it's fidget spinners. It cracks me up. Yeah. I don't want to be a teacher right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jason, if you want to switch over to this, you can, and I can show you exactly how to do it. Yeah, because for those of you guys who just signed up within a week, I will work with you because um, I, I want to make this as easy as possible. Please make it possible to change the first keyword that you use. I hate having to start over. Didola says, please make it possible to change the first keyword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I think it's I, I, under, understood. I mean, the reason for that is that actually that's the thing that forms your, your niche. So that's, yeah. that's what, what creates the shell that we, you build all of your other keywords around. Um, but yeah, we, we've heard you. We're gonna. We're, it, it's it's actually a little bit complicated, more complicated than it than it might seem. Um, so we're working on it. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, hey, have an awesome rest of your week. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for the great questions. I really, really enjoy the interaction. It's awesome. And Bob, thank you for the product you guys have offered for free for so thank long. Thank you, Seth. That's another reason I respect you guys. It reminds me of what I did. Not trying to make sound. Oh, I'm so great. You guys offered a product for free for months, months, no pay at all. This wasn't like some marketing scheme we're gonna make. And then I kept telling them, you guys, do a subscription version, you got to do that. Like you're, you're yeah. providing a value that's better than other products that are charging close to 100 or more dollars. Yeah. So it's similar. And I we're, not, we're just getting started. We have so much yeah. left. So included in, in the established, you're going to see in the coming months, there's going to be so much cool stuff coming your way. Um, yeah, so we're just getting started. Yeah. And Hamant, I did not mean to skip your questions. Um, not at all. Just email me, Hamant. Here, I'll give you my email, seth at justonedime.com. I don't mind putting my email public because our filter is so good in case someone tries to spam me. So Hamant, email me, and I'll answer your question. And I, and I apologize, I did not mean to. We, there's a lot of questions we missed, and I don't know how I missed yours, but yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, guys, have an awesome day. Remember, this deal is for this week, okay? You get access to established, Sinclair. Great question. You get access to established. So it includes the monitoring keywords. It includes the, um, the product database. and includes UK as well. Yep. All right, guys. Hey, guys, go out there and crush it. Uh, make it happen. You can do it. And again, I want to thank someone who sent me this tea. <laughs> um, it, even though it's a little squished here, I don't think that was your fault. I think I dropped it or something. But I want to thank you for the tea. Awesome. All right, guys. Hey, have an awesome right. day. Thanks, Bob. Thanks a lot, Seth. Thanks right. a lot, everyone. Bye. Bye.